Hey, what's going on everybody? Jason here, and welcome back to another Warzone 2.0 video. Today, we have an article from Infinity War detailing what's going to be happening in DMZ. DMZ, of course, being the brand new looter shooter game mode that is going to be launching with Warzone 2.0. So I think without further ado, let's go ahead and check out this article. It says right here, DMZ is a dangerous, diverse, and deep open world experience where players can choose their level of intensity. Even in its earliest form, the DMZ experience is built for the most hardcore completionists, with fact missions, contracts, world events, stocking up the stash, helping out other squads or causing chaos, breaking open locked areas, and much more. The living world has plenty to conquer on day one. The goal is to loot up and get out alive. It's about exploring an active world of AQ forces and enemy operators, completing missions and objectives, and exfiltrating with loot, cash, valuables, and rewards to build out your inventory for the next infiltration. Set your own stakes and ultimately earn some high-tier items for use across the rest of modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0. While players can choose how and where they engage, all operators must exfil from the Al Mazra exclusion zone to reap the rewards. The players will ultimately fight for mastery of the mode by discovering all the experiences and rewards it has to offer. While DMZ begins in Al Mazra, no one quite knows where it may lead. Hmm, that's definitely a hint to maybe them making some more maps. So this brief overview of DMZ sounds like it could be a pretty fun game mode. Out of everything that's happening so far in Call of Duty 2, 2.0, DMZ is definitely the most interesting of the bunch. But now, getting into some of the gameplay features, next up we have some information about the stash and the inventory. DMZ involves keeping a stash, or inventory, of weapons and other valuable items from the exclusion zone. Players will start with a small inventory of free contraband weapons. Contraband guns are only usable in DMZ, and if you lose them on the battlefield, they are gone forever. Weapons acquired from other players or enemies on the field are considered contraband after extracting with them. Call of Duty is about customizing weapons, so we will still want you to bring those custom creations into DMZ, whether it's a personal modification or a weapon blueprint. At first, you will have one insured weapon slot for any personal loadout weapon or weapon blueprint. Additional insured weapon slots can be earned by leveling up with factions. I find it somewhat comical that they're calling it factions for DMZ, because us Black Ops 4 Zombies fans know that we should have had factions. But anyways, before we go any further, I find this kind of interesting, that you lose your weapon weapon if you die and you have the option to have one insured weapon and multiple insured weapons when you level up. Now obviously in normal war zone when you die with certain weapons you don't get them back until you get a loadout drop or if you're playing plunder then of course you spawn in with weapons. But what makes this interesting is that you can extract with these contraband weapons as they're calling it and you can use them later. For those looking for an alternative path to unlocking weapons versus traditional weapon XP through matches should be excited to plan their infills. Acquiring a a contraband weapon will unlock the base weapon in the gunsmith, usable in multiplayer and battle royale, which I think is a very interesting mechanic. So let's say, for example, you don't have the 5.56 Icarus unlocked, and you find it in DMZ and you're able to successfully exfil with that weapon. Then you will have that weapon automatically unlocked, which honestly I think is a good incentive for people to go out and loot and to search for items and weapons. If you lose an insured weapon, remember insurance takes time unless you're willing to pay the right price. Extracted cash and valuables speed up the cooldown on these slots. Your stash also contains certain items out of the exclusion zone, which can be put into your loadout and backpack for the next infiltration and give you access to special locations. If your backpack fills up during a match, operators can visit one of six dead drop locations to stash items for extraction in a later match. So overall, when it comes to the looting and the stash and the backpack system, it sounds like it could be pretty fun. There's an actual incentive for looting and you might be able to unlock weapons you haven't unlocked yet, and in addition to that, you can store things in dead drops and stashes so that when you play the game again, you can access those things to have somewhat of an advantage. So the looting system and the stash system sounds pretty cool, but scrolling down here, we have this really cool image of DMZ. I really like this logo. However, we do notice that it says beta, which is kind of strange to me that DMZ is going to be launching in beta. Now, I don't know if them launching it in beta gives them an excuse for if the game comes out really broken and unstable for them to say, oh, well, it's just a beta, so give us some time to work on it or not, but I don't know, it just seems kind of weird that all of a sudden DMZ is going to be in beta now when it releases. But in reality, I think Activision and Infinity Ward calling this a beta is them covering their ass if this is completely broken at launch. Moving on, we have infill, loadout, and missions. DMZ is a trios-based game mode with the option to play as a solo or duo by disabling squad fill. We recommend you start with trios as the Almazra 
exclusion zone is a dangerous place. To teach you how to play and give you those first rewards of DMZ, you accept faction missions. These are from our world's most powerful PMC groups, the Legion, White Lotus, and Black Mouse, with the Legion being your starting faction and the other two unlocked by completing other factions missions. By completing a certain number of factions missions, you can advance up a faction's mission tiers. These missions offer significant challenges coupled with significant unique rewards. So like I was joking about earlier, DMZ gets factions before Black Ops 4 Zombies, and I think it's kind of cool adding factions to DMZ. It gives you something else to do and complete challenges for unique rewards. Also, I can assume that there are going to be faction-specific rewards, so that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Players will infiltrate the exclusion zone with their chosen loadout, insured, or contraband. Or they can bring nothing at all. Sometimes all it takes is a pair of fists and a dream. The exact point of infiltration is random every time, ensuring that no two DMZ matches will be the same. So what do they mean by this though? Because when they were talking about how DMZ works earlier, they said you can choose where you spawn in and where you infiltrate. So is it going to be the case where on the map there's going to be random locations every single time that you can choose from? Or what's the deal with that? Because this seems to contradict the other statement from earlier. But anyways, continuing to read, to get more items, players will have to extract them out of the exclusion zone with their backpack. This will provide an experience for players to complete a supply run as an example in which players can complete a run just to gear up for future deployment. In addition to the backpack, players can exfil from the world with on-soldier items including backpacks, self-revives, armor plate carriers, etc. This is critical for players looking to engage with high-tier enemies early in a match their next infill. So now we have some details about the exclusion zone itself. Other than completing the objectives laid out in Faction's missions, players are also free to explore the exclusion zone to collect more items for their inventory and take on optional assignments. These can be completing contracts, such as rescuing a hostage, taking down a high-value target, or taking part in a world event, such as activating a SAM turret or a UAV tower. So to me, it sounds like they're adding some side quests akin to Outbreak in Black Ops Cold War Zombies. Like Warzone 2.0, players can expect logical looting. Items exist in Al Masra in places they may exist in the real world, such as medical supplies in a bathroom cabinet or hospital. A police station or military outpost may contain more tactical gear. There are only a few limits to where you can explore in Al Masra. First, locked spaces, which are special areas within the exclusion zone and strongholds guarded by AQ forces. Players must obtain keys to gain access to these high-value places. Also, Al Masra won't have a circle collapse, but players will need to monitor radiation as well as the occasional sandstorm. We don't yet know what's causing this deadly energy and what operators may get from finding its source. Ooh, that sounds kind of ominous. So it's pretty interesting that they're adding some weather elements to DMZ, such as sandstorms, so I wonder how that's going to shake up the gameplay. As far as the radiation goes, I guess this is the substitute for the circle collapse, so that'll be pretty interesting, I guess. Again, there is no definite objective or path to victory here in DMZ. You are responsible for mapping your own success in this mode, with plenty of rewards for your efforts. Double XP tokens, calling cards, weapon charms, and other cosmetics. And finally, the ultimate reward, the M13B Assault Rifle. This functional weapon is part of the Bruin Ops weapon platform, along with the new BASP SMG. It can be yours to use across all Modern Warfare 2 or Warzone 2.0 modes. So I guess that's kind of interesting that one of the new weapons that you have to unlock during Season 1 is going to be unlockable through DMZ. Now, do they mean it's earnable through DMZ through a contraband weapon, where you can loot it in the world and then exfil with the gun and then you unlock it? Or are there going to be other challenges to get this gun? And in addition to that, is there going to be a Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer challenge to unlock the weapon in Modern Warfare 2 in case people don't want to play DMZ? I think those are all very important questions to ask, because for people who don't want to play DMZ and they want to use this gun, they shouldn't be forced to play DMZ and vice versa. So hopefully there's more than one way to unlock the M13B. The next part of the article talks about exfil. Winning is determined by the player's choices and the consequences that follow, but ultimately exfilling from the exclusion zone is your main objective in each match. Part of DMZ's design is to make every match matter. Anything you get in DMZ that is in your loadout or backpack is lost upon death. Players can still be revived by their squad mates even after dying, although it will take longer than the usual down revive, but if everyone drops, all that precious loot gets dropped too. The only exceptions are insured weapons, which are part of your stash, so this sounds pretty hardcore. If you're looking to complete objectives and you're looking to secure packages, to exfil with those packages, to secure more loot and to secure weapons and things like that, you have a pretty good chance of losing it all. This is just the beginning. We've built a massive living world in Al Masra with challenging enemies,
abilities, a deep mission system, side quests, secrets, and more. As we look to the future, we hope to reward players for exfiltration and new ways as we work towards new uses for cash and items. DMZ is not set out to replicate, and we can't wait to see how it plays in the wild. We hope players will share their adventures with us, as well as feedback about their experiences. See you in Almazra beginning November 16th. So, after what we've read here, and towards the end of the article where it says, DMZ does not set out to replicate, for those of you in the comments, and those of you who watch my videos who have played Escape from Tarkov, let me know if DMZ has replicated anything. Because personally, I've never played Escape from Tarkov, so this is all new information for me, this new game mode, and this is going to be a brand new experience for me. So, I'm just curious to see what's the same between DMZ and Escape from Tarkov. Well, there you have it, everybody. Those are the details about DMZ before it launches on November 16th. DMZ sounds like it could be a pretty interesting game mode, and it could add something new to Call of Duty. Call of Duty desperately needs that new thing for players to come back and enjoy this franchise. With the polarizing launch of Modern Warfare 2, adding something like DMZ will be pretty interesting. A lot of the information that we got here in the article is pretty interesting, and DMZ on paper sounds like it could be a pretty hardcore and very interesting game mode where you have to be resourceful. However, I do really like the idea that you can unlock a weapon that you haven't unlocked yet in DMZ. Because the weapon platform system in Modern Warfare 2 turned out to be kind of weird, so if you want a specific receiver for your gun, you can go ahead and unlock that in DMZ by exfiltrating with it. The faction system sounds like it could be pretty cool, completing missions, objectives, and all sorts of things in the exclusion zone in Almazra. Paired with a handful of side quests that you can do to earn extra XP and rewards, DMZ has a ton of potential. And I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record for what I'm about to say, because I've said that's at the end of basically all of my Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0 news videos, but all of this sounds really good on paper, and in practice, it's gonna play completely differently. So we have to jump into Warzone 2.0 and DMZ to see how we like it. It's okay to be excited about DMZ. I'm pretty excited about it because it's something new. But we have to recognize that Modern Call of Duty has been in a very strange spot, and not a lot of things have been that great. So let's see what happens. I'm willing to give DMZ a try. But what do you guys think about DMZ? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video, and I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe if you're a brand new viewer. And with that said, have a fantastic rest of your day or night, depending on where you are in this crazy world, and I'll see you guys next time.